Hello world of YouTube, and welcome to the first since my Nine Inch Nails discography review, reformatted discography review, the second the segment where I'm going to be taking a look at all of my old discography reviews and recontextualizing them in the new format. This is a time to Patreon exclusive show, so if you would like to see the next one already, it's linked in the description. It'll be coming out on the channel in two months. Uh, like I said in the initial uh, announcement for this, these will be happening every other month or every month on the Patreon and every other month on the channel. So if you want to get ahead of the curve and see what you're missing out on, it's linked in the description. But the first one I'm doing is a band that I, I my opinion hasn't changed a whole lot in their discography since I made the discography review. That's System of a Down. They have five albums, so it's not going to be a tremendously long video, but let's go ahead and dive on in. Need your guidance. I need to seek my end. Steal this album isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think they have a bad album in their five album catalog, but if I were to peg one as my least favorite, it would be Steal This Album, if only because it is probably the most derivative record of theirs. You know, obviously this album kind of came about as like these are b-sides from toxicity and it's it's very much still the same as toxicity there's a couple of songs that maybe have a little bit different of production for flares like ego brain and mr jack but a lot of this chicken stew bubbles boom new guns add iaio you know fuck the system very much toxicity era system of a down just more of that and while i love toxicity you'll see it Obviously, relatively high on this list. Maybe not as high as other records in their catalog. But um, my biggest which issue with this album is that it's more just more System of a Down. It has some of the absurdity more from their first album. Um, the self-titled had a lot more of the absurdity of what's on here, like on Chicken Stew and uh, IAIO's kind of delivery is a little less in line with Toxicity. But I feel like that those sacrifices were made to make a title listening experience which is probably why they were left on the cutting room floor to begin with. But this is still a great album. If you like Toxicity, check this one out. You probably already have. You probably already like this album, and you're probably already hating me for putting this uh, at the bottom of my list because it's above albums like. I also think that even though I do like this record as a whole, I find myself revisiting it the least out of the System of a Down discography collectively um, because even though I do like the weird songs and the politically charged songs i feel like and i'll say this about the next uh, entry as well the the stark contrast just makes me not want to revisit it collectively honestly like like i said i feel like there's a reason why these songs were left off the cutting room floor because they're just not as strong as the ones on toxicity personally my opinion on system of a down may be a little weird because of what's at like the number one and the number two spot but i do think that Outside of Steal This Album feeling a little B-side collection-ish, Hypnotize is definitely the weakest out of them progressing their sound because there's a clear split. And I talked about this in my original discography review. There's a clear split in the types of songs here. There's clearly Serge Tanky in front of songs like Attack and uh, Hypnotize to a degree and Stealing Society. Songs are a little more politically charged and then there's songs like vicinity of obscenity or uh kill rock and roll or she's like heroin that feel more scars on broadway-esque where darren is kind of fronting those songs and the lyrics are a lot more absurd and bonkers and while absurd and bonker lyrics have never been um out of system of announced wheelhouse there seems to be a harsh split between both of those songs and granted, there's still some moments of genius on here outside of, like, the absurdity. Because I don't mind the absurdity. I love vicinity of obscenity. I love uh, the main riff of that song. And I love how bizarre it is. But I love the build-up on You Fig. I love uh, Hypnotize as a whole. That song is fucking perfect. Darren and Serge's, like, vocals just meld, like, fucking glue together. I love the guitars on that song. I love the kind of building drum line that's in the bridge. There's... There's a lot of great moments on Hypnotize, but again, if we're comparing apples to apples, the entire system of a down discography, this is definitely one of the weaker entries because of that big split. Uh, plus, I'm not the biggest fan of Lonely Day. Like, it's it's kind of a little too on the nose for System of a Down, um, a band that doesn't necessarily again stray from very blunt uh, subject matter. It's just this song kind of meanders in its own kind of plotting way that, as the years have gone on, I feel like I've gotten more and more dated. Um, but 
this this album still really great. I feel like it doesn't, and I'm working on a redacted for these albums, by the way. But it, I feel like it doesn't feel as so much as a companion piece to mesmerize as it does just kind of the band's growing tension with each other. Uh, coming out in full spades. I feel like if you like Mesmerize, you should listen to Hypnotize because it's supposed to be the other side of that coin, but I feel like it does enough to set itself apart from that from a production standpoint and from a song type standpoint. Yeah, this is still this is still a great record. Um, I feel like if you like Mesmerize, check this out as like a next step or as like a, as like a companion piece because they are companion pieces. And I'm realizing that have, part of the problem with doing this particular discography in this format is that Two of their albums are kind of offshoots and like companion pieces to another already established album. But now that those are out of the way, let's rank their albums that don't need context, shall we? Don't be late for school again. Might be the hottest take I have this whole video is that Toxicity is not my favorite system of down record. But it's, it's not. I do love this record. I think it's a classic. I love the intensity in it. I love how visceral it sounds. I love how these guitars just sound like bricks on this on this record. I know that the, the production really makes this, this album sound incredibly heavy. And as a drummer, I love John Dolmayan's drum work on here. Whether it's just the frenzied, you know, tightness on Shimmy. Or him just making you want to just fucking bang your head on tracks like Bounce. Or prison song, uh, the breakbeat shit on Multiply. Like there's, there's a lot on here to love um, across the board. But the drums especially are fucking killer on this record. The bass line on Forest is incredible. My biggest issue, as years have gone on, and the reason why this album is number three for me, not number one or number two, the guitars. I love the guitars. I think they're heavy. I think they're pummeling. I think that the riffs on here are very good. But because the production is so thick, the riffs don't change much over a lot of this record. And I feel like Darren Malakian is a better guitar player than what this record really showcases. There's a lot of what is seen on the debut, like a lot of the, the scale sliding and a lot of the, the kind of really fast playing that he's known for is on this record still still you know the riffs on prison song or the leads on chop suey or um the the title track or the the kind of propensive grooves on shimmy and uh jet pilot and bounce and deer dance but those songs in particular have just these same kind of grooves that just don't vary up much across the project maybe that's the point maybe it was meant to make a more digestible project i'm just saying I personally prefer the first two or the the first album and mesmerize more. This though, still a great record, still worth your time. Uh, actually, a better entry point into their catalog than maybe the first two records. Uh, the hooks on here, killer. You know, uh, again, prison song, jet pilot, uh, chop suey's a gargantuan hook. Uh, Ariel's great hook. Uh, Psycho, psycho, groupie, cocaine, crazy. Like that's their own version of some of the stuff that was on the first album you know science's uh, biting commentary on on science or prison songs biting commentary this is a very political record which system of a doubt had politics on their first record but it is like doubled down on this project with a lot of the the subject matter on here needles uh, multiply there's a lot of stuff on here that is just scathingly sharp and still poignant to this day which is what i think makes it a very essential piece of music as well because of the writing on here because they're able to pen these songs that are very politically charged but not as maybe dense lyrically as uh some other politically charged albums of its era you know this this did do it in a way that was presentable and, and i appreciate it for that and i think that it's it's smart in that regard and that's why again it's still above the other two and I would still label this as a classic, one of the best of its year, one of the best of its decade, but it's just, it's not, it's not, it's not my, my favorite album of the year, guys, I'm sorry. God, it's so, so good. Their debut is so fucking unhinged, man. That's what I love about it. It's so just 
a lot more nuts than toxicity. That's why, like, toxicity was my gateway into System of a Down. Like a lot of people's, because Chop Suey was huge, toxicity was huge, Shimmy was on a Tony Hawk game. Like, I listened to a lot of their of toxicity, but when I got my hands on their debut, I just loved it so much more. Like, I'm a, you guys know I'm a fan of weird music. I love Mr. Bungle, and I feel like their influence from a band like Mr. Bungle is a lot more prevalent on here, like, Peephole's a fucking metal, like, waltzy type song with, like, this big, like, whoop-ba-ba, whoop-ba-ba sound to it. And they have micro songs like The Devil and Qbert that are just, like, weird little sonic vignettes. Um, they have the political commentary on here still, like, on uh, suggestions and sugar and, you know, mind and war and pluck, you know, but it's just delivered in a much more gnashing manner, like, Serge is just frothing at the mic on this project, and I love it so much more. I love his deeper, guttural growls and screams that he has throughout this project. I like the riff work a lot more on here. I think that there's a lot more variety in the guitar playing on here. I think the bass rattles a lot more on tracks like Mind and on uh, Spiders, and, and, and just it feels a lot more harnessed. The drums are still incredible. This is an amazing debut for them that I felt like started them off on the best note possible, and I just, ugh. Elm is, is perfection. Uh, maybe not the best starting point, but if you like Toxicity and you want something a little weirder, listen to their debut. It's it's so just unhinged. You know, it's 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 amazing. I, one of my favorite like alternative metal records. One of my favorite metal records ever. I love how just raw this record is, and it's just it's fucking great. It's it's well worth your time if you've never sat down and listened to it. For you are you dreaming? This might be my hottest take here. Uh, the fact that Mesmerize is on this point in the list. And like I said in the Hypnotize section, I am going to be making a redacted of these two projects. But I still think that this is so good. It has a lot of the unhinged weirdness that was on their debut and on parts of Steal This Album and hypnotized, but it's in a much more harnessed fashion. You know, you have these incredibly pummeling songs like BYOB and the chorus of Question or This Cocaine Makes Me Feel Like I'm On This Song, which is also one of the more absurd tracks they've ever done. Um, but you also have tracks with colossal choruses like Violent Pornography and Lost in Hollywood and um, Radio Video. You know, they have... this. This is just... Like Toxicity, a very digestible version of System of a Down, but they have more variety in the types of songs here because you have the weird shit like Cigaro and This Cocaine and Violent Pornography. Um, you have tracks that are a little more of what they were going for sonically in this era, like Sad Statue and Question. You have the softer moment like Lost in Hollywood. You have the song that uses synthetics in a way that is very different from them like old school Hollywood and while the soldier side intro if you were to listen to this on its own doesn't really make a whole lot of sense without hypnotize I still think that the rest of this record is pretty much the best version of a streamlined system of a down that you could ask for you know there, there's it's got a little bit of everything for a system of a down fans and I personally feel like it's a great entry point but uh, I feel like if I were to give you the ultimate entry point it would be toxicity and then maybe steal this album if you want more toxicity uh their debut if you want something a little weirder or mesmerize if you want them kind of branching out their sound a little more um and then going into hypnotize either way if you like alternative metal i feel like system of a down are an essential piece of that and mesmerize to me personally is my favorite because like i said it just encapsulates a lot of what i love about the band in one sort of tightly woven package you know um serge does his thing in a lot of this record daring gets to shine a lot more on like the bridge of byob and on um lost in hollywood he gets to really kind of do his softer crooning like he does on lonely day it's just a lot better on lost in hollywood um and question is my favorite system of a down song i love the accompaniment in that track i love the grand sweeping orchestral nature of the song even if it is still in a tight alternative metal jam i love the propensive building that goes throughout the chorus of that song um this is just this is pinnacle for me it's got so much good shit in it they keep it heavy cigarette is such a heavy fucking song it has the the same kind of 
growled vocals I, I loved from their debut, it, kind of in a more prominent foray on some of the heavier tracks. You know, it just has everything, and that's why it's my favorite System of a Down project, personally, and why it's at number one. So what did you think of this review? Do you still like System of a Down? Do you think they should come back? Let's talk about that in the comments down below. If you like this review, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general notary content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to the patrons if you would like to join their ranks. Catch this segment early. That's a little meatier. I'll talk a little bit about my original discography review and talk about my uh, opinions on the band's discography as a whole before I get into the albums. I give, a, I give you a meatier version of this video on the Patreon. I also let you guys help me curate what band I talk about next in this segment. Um, it's linked in the description, the Patreon. Um, but I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so very much for watching. You guys have good days out of situations. And I'll see you another day. Oh. <laughs>